580 people, 450 horses, 20 wagons, more than 100 walkers, seven days, seven nights, fed, watered, housed and supported. More than 8,000 hours of volunteer time, the Otago Cavalcade, leaving a trail of empowered and enriched support groups, Rotary, Lions, schools and sports clubs, farmers' wives and city lawyers, unpaid each and every one. Right across inland Otago, the Cavalcade motivates, excites and rewards enduring community activity. It's pure gold, not just this year and last year, but every year. Here from the Goldfields Heritage Trust, the organisation that runs the Cavalcade and much more, are Roberta Larriman and Martin Anderson. Greetings from Central Otago. In 1991, from humble beginnings, in the days before charitable grants, traffic management, OSH requirements, dock concessions and the like, the Otago Goldfields Heritage Trust held the first reenactment cavalcade over the old Dunstan Trail. In 1862, <clears throat> over 200 gold fevered prospectors per day headed over this treacherous route to the Dunstan diggings. We set out with well over 200 riders and horses, gigs, buggies, wagons, a gold coach and pack horses. We were caught in a severe snowstorm, endured freezing temperatures and later blazing sun to finally arrive five days later at Old Cromwell Town, blistered and sore, but riding high and proud. Our appreciation of what the old timers endured in their search for the gold was definitely heightened. Now the annual cavalcades bring to life some of these realities and gives nearly 600 people on nine trails an experience second to none. The grandeur of stunning high country vistas and camaraderie of companions who become true friends. The cavalcade is self-funding and essentially not for profit. Trail bosses, wranglers, gophers, first aiders, etc. are all volunteers. The food provided by service groups such as Lions, PTAs and Omaru Scouts is to die for. We've even been accused of belly abuse. They become mobile kitchens and somehow produce virtual banquets in the most unlikely places. Landowners graciously permit the trails to traverse their lands and camp at their stations, which is a great privilege. Each year new trails are forged, ending up in a different host town. We're booked up until 2014. Community groups along the way and at the host town stand to benefit hugely for their efforts and it's always heartening to hear where the monies go. In 94 it had a turnaround effect on Lawrence and provided new rugby club rooms. The kindy at the tiny township of Ofa sported a new roof simply for providing lunch on the final day. It kick-started very real funding for the Roxburgh Entertainment Centre, built new toilets and flossied up the historic old hall at Cardrona provided overhead lighting for the hockey turf and rugby grounds at Cromwell, to mention but a few. In the early depressed farming days, it gave a huge boost to the little country groups and dusty gold towns. The beneficial impact on the various Otago-wide districts involved is really impressive. Entrepreneurs have wanted us to commercialise this special event. It sure has huge potential, but that thinking would kill the vision and we'd lose those true blue characters and volunteers, plus the sheer essence of what the Goldfields Cavalcade is all about. In addition to the Cavalcade, the Trust has developed the Otago Goldfields Park and Trail, incorporating over 20 widely scattered and diverse sites, bringing together communities linked by their common gold mining heritage. We have sponsored interpretation kiosks at a number of sites, including on the Central Otago Rail Trail and in Gabriel's Gully in Lawrence, where gold was first discovered in Central Otago. We have run field trips at various goldfield sites since 1994, 
These bring members and friends together to learn about the history of these fascinating areas tucked away in our rugged landscape and also recognise the role that the Californian, Scottish, Cornish and Cantonese played in the development of the gold fields. Local personalities bring local knowledge and interpret these sites for us and small communities benefit by providing food and accommodation for those attending. The first national gold panning championships were held in 1992 and each year since have been run by our trust at Old Cromwell Town, providing a focal point for residents and visitors. Each year the overall winner is sponsored to the Australian championships. We use real gold flakes, which each competitor gets to take home. This sport appeals to all ages and families and we frequently work with school children to encourage their participation. More recently, we've taken a leading role in the restoration of important historic artefacts, such as the come in time quartz stamper battery hidden away in a remote and inaccessible corner of the Dunstan Mountains. These sites remind us of an era where gold was hard won and where the dangers were great and the rewards not always there. Abandoned for many years, but with funding from local trusts and community organisations, and with a large and willing band of volunteers, this outstanding example of Goldfields engineering has been saved for future generations to marvel at. Our latest project has been a partnership with the Department of Conservation, Historic Places Trust, and the Cromwell campus of the Otago Polytechnic to stabilise the old Bendigo Bakehouse, the last remaining building in the now banished township of Bendigo. Now the home for some of the country's finest Pinot Noir vineyards, this project reminds us that the gold of yesterday has been transformed into a modern day equivalent. Helen Clark's family came from Cromwell and it seemed fitting in 2005 to have her open our offices in the old Cromwell Methodist Church, built by her grandfather and restored by us. From this base, with a single staff member, an active committee and a supportive community, we look forward to the future with confidence. The Trust's primary obligation to, is to our volunteer base across the board. These highly valued people make possible our many projects and have set the cavalcade up as a truly unique Otago experience. This obligation extends to the hundreds of participants from all over New Zealand and overseas, many of whom see it as their annual holiday. They say they get back in touch with life as it should be. Um, even farm schedules are worked around it. You too can do it. If you can ride, if you can't ride, you can walk. And if, if that doesn't appeal, and it doesn't appeal to everybody, how about spending a week on a heavy wagon trundling through the countryside? Maybe following a dream? The Trust aims to provide this grassroots window and in so doing provide a sure opportunity for our small rural communities to benefit and share the pride.